Had it not been for political events, many people would perhaps never have heard of the vast, barren province of Northeast Africa called Abyssinia, or of its capital, Addis Ababa. The hand of Western civilization has touched only lightly on this royal city of the Emperor Haile Selassie. The speech of the street corner orator is still all important in a land where the daily newspaper does not exist. But the modern rival to the street corner orator has already arrived. There is one cinema where pathy films bring moving pictures from the West. Addis Ababa is a city of low houses flanking wide streets, streets always thronged with busy life. For six months of each year, the rainy season turns roads into mud tracks. Cars can be used only in the central streets of the city. The wealthy Abyssinian goes back to the mule, which for centuries has been his ancestor's only means of travel. All day and night, the rain falls steadily for months on end. The Abyssinian warrior is fearless and independent. His wife, too, much prefers to die beside her husband in the battlefield than stay at home to mourn his loss. From Addis Ababa, through 400 miles of barren, mountainous country, a railway runs to French Djibouti on the shores of the Indian Ocean. Twice a week, the train leaves on its journey to the coast, providing the only rail contact between the outside world and this strange, barren land. is talking about Ethiopia, but few people realize how little political events are affecting the daily lives of the peasants in the remote interior. In this desolate mountain land, news travels slowly, and far from civilization, the peasants are still living their quiet, uneventful lives, as they have done for hundreds of years. The staple food of the Ethiopians is a kind of pancake called ingera, baked in a flat pan over a wood fire. All the Ethiopian native garments are made of cotton cloth, which the women spin and weave in the most primitive way imaginable. To protect the heads of the women and children from the fierce rays of the sun, the natives plait straw hats. Many of the Ethiopians live in tukuls, wooden huts with thatched roofs and with walls covered with lime bound with long grass. There's plenty of clay in the river beds during the rainy season and the men use it for molding pots. In fact, the Ethiopians in their daily lives differ little from native peasants in every other part of the world. They're a hardy race, they need to be in the fierce climate, but their chief interests are providing food and shelter for themselves and their children like every man and woman in every part of the world. In the less mountainous regions, the Ethiopian natives keep herds of cattle, which they kill for meat or trade with the merchants in the nearest town. Ethiopia at home is a land of peasants earning a meager livelihood from the fruits of a barren soil.